Hey guys, this is Mr. Grice for Algebra 2 Unit 4 Final Exam Review. Remember, no calculator to show all your work and to write your final answers on the lines provided. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, first thing, let's review some vocab. Slope-intercept form is y equals m x plus b. m is your slope. Okay, we say that m is for movement. b is your y-intercept. We always say it's a point, 0 comma b, and the b stands for begin. It's where you begin your graph on the y-intercept. Okay? If we're talking about parallel lines, parallel lines always have the same slope. And perpendicular lines have opposite. So if it's positive, it switches to negative. And if it's negative, it goes to positive. And the one word Mr. Grice hates to spell, because I always spell it wrong, is they have the opposite and reciprocal slope. All right, parallel lines have the same slope, perpendicular is opposite and reciprocal, and slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. So identifying the x and y, uh, the x intercept and the y intercept, then graph. So x intercept is where y equals zero, and the y intercept is where x equals zero. So this is where we do the equation twice, okay? We plug in for x, and then we plug in for y. We'll move this over a little bit, okay? Another thing that you can do, highly recommend, let's make a little table. Okay, because we're going to plug in the 0 for the y, and then we're going to plug in 0 for the x. Okay, so 2x times 6, well, 6 times 0, that's, yeah, that's 0. So we have 2x equaling negative 12. To get the x by itself, we divide by 2, and we get x equals negative 6. And remember, that's the point, negative 6, 0. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. 2 times 0, those cancel out, and we're left with negative 6y equals negative 12. To solve for y, we need to divide both sides by negative 6, and we get that y equals 2. And remember that that's the point 0, 2. All right, so now let's graph. My first point, negative 6, 0. My second point, 0, 2. There we go. And the last thing that we have to do is to draw the line. So make sure you have a straight edge. I was looking for mine right there. And there we go. Make sure to add your arrows. OK. Next part, determine the slope of the line when given the information. So slope formula. Do you guys remember what the slope formula is? OK, if you don't, this would be something perfect to write on your note card. All right, slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for number two, the first thing I always do is start off with the formula, okay? We start with our y's, and our y's go on top. So I start with negative 6, and then I put down the 4. I start with the 0, the x's, they go on the bottom. And since it's a negative 2, I would have two negatives, 
So that changes to a positive. Okay, so negative 6 on the top, negative 6 minus 4. Well, that's a negative 10. On the bottom, 0 plus 2 is 2. Now we always, always, always reduce. So negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5 over 1. Or you could just say that your slope is negative 5. Okay, 3 through 6. 3, what's your slope? Well, what type of line do we have? That is a vertical line. And vertical lines always have a undefined slope. It's just something you need to memorize. Okay, so vertical lines always have an undefined slope. What about a horizontal line? Do you remember? It's laying flat. It's because it's lazy. Yeah, lazy, it's zero. Okay, slope of a horizontal line is always zero. And remember, we do have posters in the room. Just look for them. All right, number five. Now, the first thing I notice about number five as I'm starting to set this up is that we either talk about rise over run or fall over run. Okay, and this line is falling. So right away, I know it's going to be negative. So I'm going to start right there and count that I go down, I go down negative three. And then I go to the right, how many? Two. Okay, so my slope is negative three over two. All right, six. Is that rise over run or fall over run? Well, look at it. From left to right, the graph is rising. So this is rise over run. So from here, I go up how many? We go up two and then to the right, Remember, this is 5, so 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, we always want to reduce our fractions, okay? So I can divide the top and bottom by 2, and we get a slope of 1 fourth, okay? So I'm just going to write myself a little note right here that we need to always reduce when possible. Okay, let's flip it over. So write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Remember that slope-intercept is the y equals mx plus b. Okay, so this says my slope is negative two-fifths, so I can put negative two-fifths in for my slope. And then the negative four, remember we said how B is where we begin, it's a point. That's our point, okay? And it's the point negative four. All right, number eight. Number eight, it's asking us to well, yeah, we got to put it in slope-intercept form, but it's not. So how do I put it in slope-intercept form? Well, the first thing that I would do is move the 5, because we want the y by itself. I'm going to subtract 5x to both sides, and we get negative 4y equals negative 5x minus 28. And is the y by itself? Nope. So to get the y by itself, I have to divide, and I want to divide everything by negative 4. Okay? So the y is by itself. Negative 5 divided by negative 4. Well, a negative divided by negative is a positive x. 
and then negative 28 divided by negative 4 is a positive 7. So my final answer is y equals 5 over 4x plus 7. Okay, so for number 9, they're asking us if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So I'm going to write down that first equation y equals 2x plus 9. So the thing that I care about is the slope. So the slope is next to the x, and that is 2, and we would say that that's 2 over 1. Good. Okay. Now, my second equation is not in slope-intercept form. So we have to put it in slope-intercept form. We want to get the y by itself, so the first thing that we're going to do is to add the 10x to both sides. And we get 5y equals 10x plus 70. Now the y is not by itself yet, so we have to divide by 5. And then we get y equals 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2x. And 70 divided by 5, yeah, that's 14. So I want to know what's my slope, and it's 2 over 1. So looking at our two slopes, are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? Which one? Hopefully, you're saying the one that starts with a P. No, not perpendicular, parallel. Yeah, they have the same slope, so that means they're parallel lines. All right, number 10. Now, looking at both of those, they are not in slope-intercept form, so we're going to have to solve for both of them. Now, if you're feeling gutsy, pause the video. Try it yourself. You can do it. OK, so to get the y by itself, I'm going to subtract 5x to both sides. And we get negative 2y equals negative 5x plus 20. To get the y by itself, I'm going to divide by negative 2, and we have to watch our negatives. Okay, a negative divided by negative is a positive, and a positive divided by negative is a negative. So my slope is 5 over 2. Okay. On the other equation, we have to add 2x to both sides, and we get 5y equals 2x plus 6. The y is not by itself, so I have to divide everything by 5. And we get y equals, well, 2 fifths just stays 2 fifths plus 6 divided by 5. Ugh. Thankfully, we don't have to graph that, but we can leave it as a fraction. Now, my slope is 2 fifths. So let's take a look. We got 5 over 2 and then 2 over 5. Are they parallel, perpendicular, or neither? And they are neither. Like, Mr. Grace, come on! They're, they're reciprocals! Well, yeah, they are reciprocals, but let's go back and look at our definition. Okay? Parallel lines need to be reciprocals, yes, but they also need to be opposites. And since they're not opposites, they are neither. 
All right. We're getting to the end. Calculate the slope of the line in the diagram below. So they're saying the number of people injured in motor vehicle accidents. On the left-hand side, that's our Y is the number in millions. And on the bottom, we have our year, and that's our X, okay? So if you like saying, well, X is years, and Y are the people, and we're talking about in millions, okay? So if they're asking for slope, we need to use the slope formula. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite those two points, 2.89, and then our other point is 2007, 2.49. So do you guys kind of see where I got those points from? Okay, so if I'm using finding the slope, we're going to use this slope formula. So y2 minus y1, so we have 2.49 minus 2.89. Okay, sorry that didn't come out very nice. Okay, and then on the bottom, 2007 minus 2003. I'll be nice. I'll tell you what the bottom is. So what's 2.49 minus 2.89? Well, you've got that little baby calculator. When you do that, you should get negative 0.4. Okay? And when you reduce that, that ends up being negative one-tenth. Okay, so our slope is negative one tenth. So what does that mean in the context of the problem? Well, that's telling us something, okay? It means that. So what I want to do is this 10 is talking about years. So every year, if we count it 10 times, that ends up being one. And so 1 million people are injured. Injured in what? We're talking about, says right there, motor vehicle. Uh, motor vehicle accidents every 10 years. Okay? And if you don't like being like, oh, every 10 years, that's kind of hard to figure out. Well, remember that we're talking about in millions, so you can do negative one-tenth times a million, and then you can find out how much it is each year. Okay, you could talk, talk about that too. That's fine. All right. Well, guys, that's it. <laughs> All of the final reviews. Hopefully, we've prepared you. Did you work on your note card? We talked about a couple of equations, so this might be some things you want to write down. So, this is it for Algebra 2, Unit 4, Final Exam Review. If you have any questions, please come see Ms. Carranza or myself. We would love to help you out. Otherwise, this is Mr. Grace signing off. Thanks for watching.